Hi, I'm Kelsey Young, and I want to share with you what happened to me on my way home from World Race Training Camp. <laughs> so, I live in Northeast Tennessee, and my friend Jenna lives in Pittsburgh. And before the World Race, we messaged each other on Facebook and decided that we would carpool from uh, Tennessee down to training camp in Gainesville, Georgia, and save on gas money, things like that. So after a crazy week of amazing training camp, um, we're on our way home. Uh, we're about an hour and a half past Gainesville, and one of her tires goes flat. So we're on the side of the interstate trying to figure out what to do um, because we both, we've seen people change tires, we've been taught how to, but until you do it yourself, uh, we were kind of at a loss, to be honest. But we get all the stuff out of the trunk, ready to go, uh, we're going to do this, and we get to the tire and we start trying just to get the um, nuts off and we realize that even if we knew how to do this properly, we are not strong enough to do it. And so we just sit a moment and we pray because not not only do we need help with this, but we're two girls on the side of a very busy interstate where it is not safe, not only because cars could hit you, but because we're two girls and we're alone. So we pray for protection and Jenna specifically prays that a Christian family will come and help us, that not just anybody will, um, because we were two girls alone, but that a Christian family would stop and help us. And afterwards, I called the police department just to let them know that we're there on the side of the road and just see if they knew someone that could help. So we sit for a minute kind of fig trying to figure out what to do, and I swear, not even probably three minutes after we said our prayer, uh, a car pulls off right in front of us to help. And I look and I see that it's an uh, older couple, a lady and a man and a man, and I was immediately relieved to see that um, it was just a couple together, and they walk, they walk towards us and say, hey, what's up, like, can we do anything to help, and we said, yeah, and we explain the situation, and he gets to work on it, and we start talking to um, his wife, and it ends up that he's a dean at the college right there, um, nearby, the Christian Ministry College, and he's a pastor of a church. And so right away it was like, I was just amazed because not only did we have someone help us, but it was a couple. So they were working on it and he, he could not get it off. And then the police arrive maybe 20 minutes later. And so we had the officer come and he tries to get it off and he can't. And so we're looking at manuals and they're calling people and we're calling people trying to figure out if there's something different we should do for this type of car because the bolts just will not come off no matter what we do. Um, so the police calls another officer to come and help him. And the pastor and his wife, they call their friends. Um, and so his friend named Dennis, because he has a lot of tools at his house, and he comes with some WD-40 trying to spray it and knock at it, and they still can't get it off. And so Dennis, uh, the pastor and his wife's friend, he calls his friend who has a tow truck company so he could tow the car to his house and we could figure it out. So we have two police officers, a pastor and his wife, and their friend Dennis, and then Dennis's friend, the tow truck driver. And they're all there trying to help us with our tire. And me and Jenna are just like, oh my gosh, not only God did you send one person, but you sent all these people to help. And so they basically say, you know, there's no way we can get this off. Everything's closed right now. You're going to have to take it to a shop because the bolts are rusted to the car and it's going to take a long time to try to knock it. And if you do, you're going to probably need to get a new tire. So we're like, oh, we're sitting there. I'm trying to get a hold of people from Adventures and Missions to see if they could possibly come get us. And... We're trying to figure it out because they are so far behind. It's like an hour, and we're trying to go the opposite direction of where Adventures and Missions is. And Dennis, the pastor and wife's friend, he calls his wife and gets the okay, and he offers uh, me and Jenna a place to stay for the night. He says, we have extra rooms. You're welcome to come stay. And 
you know, we'll take care of you for the night. And, you know, we're a little apprehensive because we didn't know him until just then. But, you know, I kind of walked away and quiet to myself, you know, said a prayer and asked God if it was safe. And I just, I really just had a peace about it. And I asked Jenna if she was comfortable with it. And it was the same way. So we, this man is kind enough to get our car towed to his house. And they offered to pay for it. Um, for the towing and everything. And we get there and the pastor and his wife come just to make sure we're comfortable and feel safe and walk in with us. And Dennis and his wife are so kind. They gave us uh, juice and fresh grown fruit and whatever they had, they offered it. They sat and we shared stories that night. Um, the next morning, uh, well, we go downstairs and so we haven't slept in a bed all week because we've been at training camp. We've been sleeping on tent floors and buses and crazy stuff. And we show up at this house, and we both had a full bed to ourselves. I had a whole entire room with a king bed in it. And I was just like, God, like, you know, if we would have drove home, it would have been all night. And it's like you took this thing that could have been awful and made it a blessing. Not only, you know, did we get help, but we're not driving all night and arriving home tired. We're getting to rest for a night in this beautiful home with this wonderful couple who's just showing us so much love and we get a room to ourselves and time to relax in our own shower and in the morning they cook us breakfast and they offer to take us to church that morning and we go and we meet their church family and they the church is so happy to hear our story and we got to share with them what God's doing in our lives and what he did for us that miracle that night and they after that they took us to a Thai restaurant and fed us lunch and gave us a bag of fruit to take home and drive home with and while we were at church Dennis went and got the tire fixed and paid for it and everything um and it was just it was a crazy night but it was an amazing night and God just did so not only did he answer a prayer and have someone stop, but he did more than that. He he gave us a new family and friends that we'll have forever. Um, I was reminded of this verse. It's uh, Matthew six twenty six. It comes up a lot when I'm thinking of financial stuff and trusting God, but I felt like it fit for this too. It's Matthew six twenty six, and it says, "Look at the birds of the air. They do not sow or reap or store away in barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them." Are you not more valuable than they? I'm going to read that again. Look at the birds of the air. They do not sow or reap or store away in barns. And yet our Heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not much more valuable than they? So God just answering something that could be a simple, small prayer and taking it and going beyond the way He always does and restores. And it might seem like a little small story, but I thought it was worth sharing. So God bless.